Hello everybody and welcome back to Train Bros Railway. Today we are in the shop and we are going to start our install of RailPro into our Canadian National Alico S4 switcher. And this is basically everything you need to do the install. I will discuss and talk about everything we need and you guys are going to see the nitty gritty of how this is installed and each step by step. So if you're going to be installing with us, welcome. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And uh, this is going to be a few parts for this series, but I figured we've had lots of questions on how to do stuff and we've gone in detail, but not so in detail, like step by step. So you guys are going to be along for the ride for the install on this switcher. So the first thing, I guess we'll start over here. We have the actual module itself. Pretty cool, pretty simple. We'll open this up a little bit later in the video, but I just thought I'd show you there. This is our handheld controller. This is the brains of everything that has all of your control. If you power on here, it tells you all your locomotives. You can do turnouts. There's a whole bunch of other stuff. We might do a demonstration video on like a walkthrough on this. But for now, there's our controller. Now these here are plugs. Now this is a three wire plug into a two. For the simple fact of we've ran out of the three wire fem or the two wire female ends. This could also be replaced by a three position switch, which for this model here, we're probably gonna end up ordering one. We ordered one for our first model, but our other two we never did because we had good access into the inside with the fans. But unfortunately this doesn't come off very well and this smoking unit doesn't work very well. So we're thinking we're gonna hide the switch right under there. So we'll probably end up cutting away some plastic there, putting the switch there and it'll be covered nicely by the smokestack. But anyways. This is another option. These are available on Amazon. I forget the technical name of the switch, but they're or the plugs, but they're pretty run of the mill plugs and they're the exact same one that comes on the battery. So you just peel to unplug the battery and replug it in. Also too, I will show you guys the charger in some point of this video. The charger is also kind of neat and uh, I'll show you the charger in one of these videos, maybe at the end of this video. But anyways, we also have our LEDs. These ones were ordered off of Amazon as well. They are WW for warm white because this switcher is kind of in the days of halogen lights. So we kind of wanted that warm LEDs. Now, right in the in the instructions of the board, it says you need LEDs that have resistors in them because LEDs won't work without the resistors. So we buy these ones, which are pre-wired in. And you can kind of see that little bump. That's the resistor under there that's already put in. So it's just as easy as hooking up colors to colors. Makes it super simple. I'd highly recommend those over the ones that do not come with it. Next, we have our hookup wire. Also another Amazon buy. These are all relatively popular things on Amazon, so they're easy to get. This is um, silicone wire, not PVC, just because it's easier to move and work with. I believe this is 16 gauge wire. This goes from all of our functions to extend these LED wires and tie everything into the board. It's a nice gauge for these terminal blocks. It all fits in really nice and you guys will see that. Now, where we buy our RailPro boards and everything, they also have speakers. You can also get them on Amazon. Just make sure that the size fits in this one. This one we ordered specifically for the Alico S4 on the website. You can choose what model you have. If I just quickly open this up, here's our speaker. Turn this one handed. There you go. This is what the speaker looks like. Got four mounting holes. In all of our other models, we were able to put it where the gas tank is, but as you can see, this guy doesn't have it. So from what we were researching, although there's not much on these Alicos, is it goes in here. But if we size this up, you can see it's too big. So we don't know what's going to go on with that. We like these speakers. So this is kind of the nitty gritty. We're going to figure out how to put this in there. It might sit vertical. And these vents here are louvered. So you'll be able to still hear the sound. So it might sit in there like this. We'll see when we open up the train. Because believe it or not, we have bought this train and we did some maintenance to the trucks and that's all we've done. This thing has been bulletproof reliable 
and we've never actually been inside. So that's your speaker. Zip ties, these are like the smallest ones you can get. Very useful to keep everything nice and neat and tidy in there, and it keeps it a little less confusing. Now we do have a piece of wood that I would say is probably a half inch by half inch. I made this one, but you can definitely buy it. We use wood to keep the Rail Pro board elevated off the chassis because it says it needs good airflow. So we just cut small sections and we just prop the Rail Pro board up on it. Very useful. It makes it a lot nicer to mount. Keeps it all nice and neat. This is also here, our tin or solder. This is 6040 rosin core solder. It's very important that you get a good solder. You can also use heat crimps, but the wires are so small that it's kind of a pain, so it's just good to have good soldering. Another thing is, is this screwdriver we kind of had to go out and buy specifically because it's so tiny. If I can get you a shot. There, this is smaller than your smallest terminal screwdriver because on the board, those screws there are very tiny, and I'll show you that too. Then Phillips screwdrivers to open up the body and everything like that. Good set of wire strippers and side cutters or flush cutters, whatever you want to call them, useful. Electrical tape. We usually use our heat shrinks. These are super, super tiny. These are, I think, like eighth inch or smaller. They're very, very tiny, like smaller than a drinking straw. Um, because these wires are so thin and so tiny. So you can use electrical tape by taping it up nice or the heat shrinks knife just for utility purposes. Uh, hot glue gum, very useful for mounting LED lights in there. We mount the board with it and I think on our last model we ended up hot gluing the speaker into the gas tank as well. It's useful because it's not as permanent as crazy glue you can still kind of peel it away if you mess something up so it's a little bit more forgiving and we don't like to use the lighter or anything like that on our heat shrinks because of all the electronics so we just use a hair dryer on high heat works pretty good and then also our soldering iron we used to use our small one without a stand no temperature it was an absolute nightmare to do the soldering, you need a good soldering iron. I would definitely highly recommend spending the money getting the soldering station because it just makes it so much easier, so much quicker instead of struggling to solder. It can either make or break the project. So I would definitely highly recommend it. Even if you're just doing one of these, you'll find uses for it for sure. There's so many other ways you can use a soldering iron. I would highly recommend it. Okay, so now we're gonna get into each individual component that we have and we'll talk a little bit about it so that you guys, if you're looking at buying it or if you bought it, you guys will kind of be familiar. So right out of the box, they have the instructions. Pretty straightforward. You can go ahead, read it. I'm pretty sure they have a PDF on their website about stuff. There's a bunch of stuff about the battery and all that, but the most important one, I would say, the most useful page we use, at least, is this page right here. So this page here, is all about your functions that are there. There's six different functions. It tells you how to wire the speaker and everything like that. And it's very useful because we usually end up writing what features or what functions we want there. And then this tells you like where the term, that's the terminal block there. There's a plug here I'll show you in a minute. And this is the warning with the LEDs about the resistor. So if you have LEDs that don't have resistors, you should use a 200 ohm resistor. So that's the instructions there. That's the most useful page right there. And in here, this is what the actual board looks like. So here's the board. And on this side is where this guy plugs in. This is has all your this is where you wire all your different functions to. And they're all color coded so you know which ones are which. And it simply plugs into the back of there. And that's your functions. This here is like a capacitor and it's far away because this could heat up. So we, it's recommended that you keep this away from the board somewhere. I, we usually maybe like hot glue it away or we've tucked it down into the gas tank in the locomotive. This is also a heat sink. This emits heat and so does here. There's the warning, which is exactly why we put two pieces of wood under here like this when we go to mount it in 
the locomotive. So that's all we do like that. And we just hot glue it down. Pretty easy, pretty straightforward. And then on here, sorry guys about the focusing. I haven't figured that out yet. This is where it is. It's just motor one, motor two for the two motors and whether or not it's battery or track power. And then all the functions, the common comes back into this and I'll show you that in the install. All right, next up is our speaker. Not too much to talk about. It just tells you about the dimensions. It's fairly heavy, so it could add weight to your train to pull. This is a foam gasket, so you can make a good seal to wherever you're wanting to project the sound at. This is a four ohm speaker. It's pretty straightforward. Your two speaker functions that come out of the board. We just solder some of our hookup wire to it, hook it up to solder it onto here and right to the board. Pretty straightforward. I guess while we're here, we can talk about the wire too. Doesn't matter what color you use, it all comes in little rolls. It's actually a nice kit, you can just pull it out. They do have the rolls in there. Pretty straightforward, good Amazon purchase, highly recommend it. Okay, next is this battery. This is the battery that we get from our supplier where we get the actual RailPro board. These are already all made up and, nice, and nicely heat shrunk. There are cells in here. This is the sticker that tells you we run an 18.5 volt. 33.50 mAh battery, that's just the size, the captivity of it, and it's got a 6 amp max current. This already has our end that we need to either go into the DPD, or the, sorry, the charge, on-off charge switch, or you could use those plugs like I was saying earlier. Either way, works perfectly fine, it just depends on if you want to hit a switch or unplug it. So this is the battery that we use, and it should fit into the train very well. And we go to the dollar store and buy Velcro and we Velcro the battery into the train because we don't want to melt any of this stuff um, with the hot glue. Well, there you have it, everybody. There is the intro to this build series of putting RailPro into the Alico S4. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. You guys are going to see all the problems we run into, solutions. Maybe you guys can comment down below and see if you guys have any solutions for us along the way. And uh, if you guys have any other techniques that we're not aware of, let us know. Because it's always fun to learn, and we never stop learning in the hobby. And uh, until next time, guys, take care, take it easy, and keep it on the rails.